Then Kutuz's love will win. Part 6 of 9. On between Master and Disciples. Given in English. On June 10, 2020. When I went to Halifax afterward, we had problem. Yeah, the snow was so bad that the airplane returned to the airport. Wow! And uh, we have, oh, we have many pets there and other things, so that I cannot leave only one guy alone at home. Yes. And new, don't know how to feed dogs and how to wear warm dog clothes before I go out in the snow. The snow was so deep, I had to go back from Halifax back to Saint John. So the airplane, stop, don't go. The airplane, uh, you know, say, okay, we, we have a hotel for all of you, you stay here. And tomorrow the weather will be fine, we take you back home. All of the customers stay except me, I say I have to go. So I went out, they don't refund, no, because I volunteer to go. It's not their fault, you see. I don't ask either, I say I have to go. And then so they told me, uh, but you get nothing, huh? I said, okay, never mind, don't worry, just let me go. <laughs> and then they said, but the weather is so bad, you, you cannot go, you cannot go. Before that, I went to Halifax because there's one man, he has frostbite with his fingers. He has no gloves and has to go to hospital and bandage all over and his feet also. And so I heard that, oh, my heart sank, you know, so I bought him stuff, yeah. Originally, I want to send by post, and, but nobody know where he live. Oh. Yeah, nobody know because he's a homeless man. Yes, master. I said, then I have to go to Halifax. I'm sure somebody must know because the TV report about it. So maybe I have to go there and ask. They probably know or something, some charity somewhere. Somebody must know him. So I went to Halifax by airplane, but came back by taxi. The taxi driver, She's the only one who dare took me because nobody want to go in this weather. Oh. You know, you can't even see the road in front of you. But I said, I had to go, my pet. So she agreed to, I said, I pay you double, triple. And she agreed to go because of the money. I said, oh, thank God, very good of you. And then she drive just uh, maybe half a kilometer, a few hundred meters, and then she bum and then bury herself and us into a snow uh, mountain. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Yeah, and luckily we get all out and dig, 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 and then we came out. So I said to my attendant at that time from Costa Rica, I said, you drive. I cannot trust this woman now. <laughs> Maybe she's too tired driving all day already. And this time she's supposed to not driving anymore, you know, rest. But uh, because of us, she, she did feel sorry for us, so she took us, yeah? Also, we pay her, her well but I could not blink my eyes because I have to drive with him. Yes, yes, master. Left, right, straight, no, 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 slow, slow. Now, okay, 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 go, 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 but slow, slow, slow. All night, you know, I don't know how many hours from St. John to Halifax. Uh, it's the night even. Yes, master. At night. And what did the taxi driver did? She sit on the back, I sit in the front. Wow. Yeah, I have to watch yeah. and keep him awake as well. Uh, we have to talk and keep him awake. I sing, I talk, <laughs> and I direct the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> him only, nobody on the roads, at least, thank God. Nah? And it's slide and it slipped and it veer left, right, etc. I should not have done that. But I had confidence. But before that, we were successful in asking people and found that homeless man gave him some money. Incredible. But I told him, don't tell anybody, okay? Yeah. It's better for you, just for you. Don't tell people that you have money, cash is dangerous, okay? I can't give him check, can I? <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him, I think, some thousands of dollars in cash and then clothes and gloves and hat and Muds and socks and shoes, yeah? Wow. Boots. He's a homeless man, but somebody give him a storage room to, to live in. And a church charity know that. So 
asking, asking, asking. One person say to another, and another, another, and we landed in there, and we asked somebody to please call the church father and his wife. They came. A very humble couple. Yeah, they do charity. You understand? They help the homeless, so they know where he is. So they took us to that storage room where he lives. It's not a room at all. He has a broken sofa. They gave him better than nothing. And all around him are chairs and all kind of furniture. He has only that sofa and a few meter to go to the toilet. That's it. A few meter, but zigzag. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and a warm stove or something to cook. That's all. And he lived there, but at least he's warm. Why he has frostbite? Because he went out to look for job, for work. Yeah. Even work for food, but he didn't have anything to cover himself. I remember it was 40 degree minus. Some day 30, but some day less. Some day more than 40. I remember something like that, yeah? 30 is warmer day, yeah? But I remember 40 less degree. I said, I can't believe people live in such weather. I said to my attendants, and I can't believe that I could even walk, you know, from the car to the shop. I thought I would freeze to death in such a weather, you know, before I imagined 40 minus is unbelievable to live in. Yes. And you can't even go shopping. <laughs> yeah, and go do my hair. <laughs> so, so I say, oh, that man, he must suffer so much if he doesn't have any gloves and sh socks. I had to go. If I don't go, I would suffer mentally. Yes. Imagining how suffering he, he has to endure. I would suffer more. Imagining it. Yeah. And not doing anything. So I, I left. And that's how it happened. So luckily we went back on time pay the lady the money, get her a hotel room so she can rest until morning. Then she can drive. You know, I say, you better sleep. You don't go back now. You better sleep until the weather is better, uh, safe, then you drive. She said, okay, okay. So we book her in the hotel, pay for it, and then let her there, and then we, we say goodbye. Somebody came in and get us. At least can have telephone contact. <laughs> I thought I told you all this story already, but I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, anything else you want to know? Master, it was just so touching that you traveled all the way to Halifax, like just for one person, and in that dangerous weather. Yeah, never mind. And it's like in the article, it quotes the store manager yeah. who was um, watching Master fill up the carts, and he said, it's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this, never. Uh, uh, and I've been here five years. Uh, uh, even our business accounts, nothing uh, like this. Uh, <laughs> so even like the businesses who do charity, it, it was not comparable to what Master was doing. So it's really remarkable. That's not a charitable shop. There are different shops. So we're talking about the church in St. John is the Salvation Army. Yes. They, they do charitable shop. And the one that I bought from their top class uh, uh, clothing shop. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I also donate because originally we just want to give the clothes and go, but the major of the Salvation Army, he told me about the land next door, that if he could buy it, it would be good for something. Maybe he can have a shelter for the homeless or something. I forgot. So I gave him money to buy the land. It's quite cheap, I'm surprised. Maybe because his is a charitable organization, so they probably give him cheaper price or something, yeah. And then there's another, it's a different organization. And I, I give them also cash because I cannot get uh, much more money out. Whatever I can get out of that day, I give to them or more, more than what I get out. I think I can get about only 20,000. Canadian dollars per day, yeah. I, I never need so much, so I never ask for more. And lucky that I had credit card right? before I never had. I was in America without anything. Uh, and my money, it, uh, my disciple have a big bank account there. And when I say I want to join her, they say, you want to take her money, don't you? That's why you want to join. <laughs> yeah, then they didn't let me. 
They didn't let me to make a joint account with her. There was my money and she took it uh, from Taiwan for me some time ago. All disciples have money. <laughs> my business, uh, they control. They are manager this and that. I hardly had anything before. Now I, I do have some just so that I can show to the world that I'm not here or there to eat your, your food. <laughs> I'm able to take care. Sometimes for alphantite residents, for bureaucracy, for paperwork. Otherwise, I don't see any money coming. <laughs> yeah, of course, but I'm not lacking of anything. If I need, of course, I can ask, but I hardly need anything. I don't like asking. Anything dependency is really against my nature, <laughs> against my religion. <laughs> they say that, yes. If I ask, uh, and don't have, then I don't ask anymore. Yes, Master. Or if it's not done automatic, then I don't ask. Okay. Yeah, I don't need much. Or you see my clothing and beautiful and all that, I just wear it for work. It's like uniform, you know, yeah. <laughs> special uniform. The rest, uh, I don't need much. I can wear cheap clothes, simple and comfortable. Yes, yes. So I don't really need much. Even when I was not a master, you know, I was starving for three days in Paris without job, oh. without job, looking for a job. I still don't tell the people that uh, I don't have money. The the people who who took me in uh, to work there, and when I quit for some uh, sentimental reason, they asked me if I want some money. I said, "Oh no, no, thank you. It's okay." Oh. I didn't want them to misunderstand. I was in love with the house man that time. <laughs> oh. I told you this story already. Yeah. Because his wife is very ungentle to him. Mm -hmm. He's a doctor, he's busy already, and go home, have to do this, do that for the kid. Yeah, and she could do it, but it's not like she tell him nicely, say, hey, do this, hey, go do that, like ordering. So I feel sympathetic with him, and then <laughs> that turns slowly into like romance, but I didn't know. But I, I caught control until he broke it, and then I had to run. Yes. Yes because now I knew that he also has a feeling for me, then I cannot stay. It will be dangerous. If alone, me alone, then I can control, but I'm young. <laughs> so I say I have to go, because I quit immediately. I don't have anywhere to stay and no money at all. A student, just have a few dollars to go with bus, but not enough to even buy bread. If I buy bread, I have no money to go anywhere to look for a job. So three days I had nothing, and then I was walking in the park, yeah, looking for a job still, you know, and the man come and offer me 800 francs, French money at that time. I don't know how much US dollar, maybe half of it. 800 to go with him. So I say, if you don't leave, I call police, huh? Oh. Then I look serious, so, so he, he left me. At, at least he's decent, you know? Mm. Very decent, yeah. Even when I was younger, still, in Vietnam, you know, I, I went to some area and and I had not much money, you know, students, you know. And the owner of the house, friend of a friend, let me stay. And they prepare the food and leave it for me. I didn't know if they left for me or not, because they left before I, I'm out of my room. So I did not dare eat it. Mm -hmm. So I went out, just eat uh, bread, <laughs> bread and drink water. Oh my so to ask something for me is very, I don't feel comfortable. Yes, Master. 